So have you guys seen this video circulating? This beautiful woman is about to be 96 and she has her own home. She says she's had this home for 70 years and she was able to get this home and she's an unmarried woman. Keep in mind, she is a black woman and she's a woman. And back in her time, they were not able to do things or we were not able to do things because this country is built on racism and sexism. She's still looking good. She's refreshed. She's loved in her neighborhood. She said that she is known as the mother of the neighborhood or better known as Aunt Dolores. I'm pointing that out because she's able to live stress-free. She's a happy and loved woman. And I'm putting this out there because so many people are still running to these internet streets to act like child-free women won't have people to fall back on or to rely on as they get older. But this woman is the auntie and the mother of the neighborhood. So that is untrue. So this person jumps in the comments and asks the question, can someone please explain why a woman couldn't buy a house? What were the reasons behind this law? Please remember, this country is built on racism and sexism. It's just baked into the cake of America. It's just baked into the American apple pie. Racism and sexism are as American as apple pie. But Black Rob says the same reason a woman couldn't have a credit card in her name until the 70s, sexism. And Shayla reminds her, or vote. There were so many things we couldn't do. Somebody else says no, no woman could buy a house in her um, in the 60s, not even a white woman. And someone simply said patriarchy. This person says back then women had no say. Women have always been second class citizens in this country, even white women. Um, that's why Manny says sexism, racism, ignorance. And this country does not teach real history. If it taught real history, uh, this question wouldn't even need to be asked. Um, this person, Issa, Issa Girl, says we need back a patriarchal society. So she wants to go back to a time where women didn't have rights. I wish she would just go relinquish her rights and leave the rest of us alone. Someone asked why she would say that, but she never answered because I was looking through the comments. Um, spoken on Keisha said they could also be raped by their husbands and basically it wasn't against the law. This was the madman era. It's a real era in history. I need y'all to know that this is what feminism did for us. Feminism allowed us to not be great to buy our husbands, to be able to buy things that we wanted to buy, um, that we didn't have to go down to a bank with a man to sign for us. We were given basic human rights that we shouldn't have been denied in the first place. Women should not have had to go and fight and go to court for these basic rights. It shouldn't have, we shouldn't have had to do that. But being born in the United States with a uterus or having skin that's not white meant that we were subjugated and subject to their rule. And someone else reminds them or get their tubes tied without their husband's consent. This woman said 96. She looks like she's in her 60s. Um, this person says because she ain't had no man. Um, this person says because she's never been married. <laughs> Please understand that this woman is the living embodiment of living a stress-free life and her face and body is showing it because she is living well and she still has friends and family and still has people coming around her. So all of that being unhappy and dying alone with your cats, people can shove that into the back. So I know I did these screenshots yesterday, but I want to drive home the point of the things that feminism won for women in this country. Before 1974, women weren't allowed to have a bank account or apply for credit without a man. Before 1978, Women could be fired simply because we got pregnant. Before the 1970s, it was difficult for women to get a divorce. No fault divorce had to become a thing. Otherwise, you had to go to court and prove the reason why you needed to be divorced. And there had to be a good reason such as adultery or violence that you could prove. Before 1988, women couldn't get a business loan in their own name. They needed a man. Before 1977, women had no legal protections from sexual harassment at work. Men could do what they wanted. Men could tie your money, your performance um, evaluations to whether or not you performed for them. So for the anti-feminists that come on and want to give back their rights, 
Which one of these rights would you give back? These days, all of these men are rushing to the internet to remind women that if they don't have um, kids or get married, they're just going to grow old and just be so unhappy. Like this man asked the question, and this was going around a while ago, what's your plan B if nobody marries you? And women are coming to the forefront. They're like, we're going to be fine. We have friends. We have hobbies. But this woman made me laugh. She says she's working on her popping and locking and did a whole little dance because this question is so silly and she had the perfect response for that. I had to go ahead and give her a follow because of that. 4B is taking the West by storm. Some women are opting out of marriage, kids, dating, all of that. They're like, no, I don't want any part of this. And you're seeing it on multiple women's posts. You're seeing it across race. You're seeing it across country, culture, all over the place. So this creator was talking about the 4B movement. She's not talking about the West 4B movement. She's just talking about the 4B movement in general. And someone leaves this question, you should always be okay to be alone, but isolation is not good for society. Are we trying to punish men? And so many people think this way, but simply not dating, simply not getting married is not about punishing men. It's women doing what they want and decentering men. And so many people don't get the difference. And it is maddening that this is hard for some people. So the 4B movement has uh, TikTok, taken TikTok by storm. And so many people are talking about it. And so let me address this comment, the idea that it's a punishment to men when I don't believe that it is. I believe that it's a very smart assessment and it is about being active instead of being reactive to a lot of the concerns that women have consistently had. And we've reached a point where we have to make a decision based on safety, based on emotional well-being, and based on mental health. And the reality of it is, is that ain't nobody ever ran from a good man, never. A good man don't have no problems, honey, getting that big piece of chicken. Ain't nobody running from no good man. That's never going to happen. But what we are saying is that unless it is a man that sees us as human, that has unpacked patriarchy within himself, that can communicate, that is willing to actively participate in our lives and in the relationship and in doing the dishes, we good. And what I find interesting is that perception and reality have not really caught up. Black women are not out here having a bunch of babies all over the place. It really isn't happening. And if people actually looked at the numbers, the, the fertility rate amongst Black women is below replacement rate, just like it is for um, other women in the United States. And um, TikTok has given child-free Black women the visibility, but people are still really not looking. Like this woman says, point of view, you're a black woman that doesn't want kids. And one thing that she's talking about is the fact that she was the oldest child and that she was basically a second parent to her siblings. There are so many women that are opting out because they had to be a second parent. So when parents have all these kids, understand that you might not get grandkids from that oldest child. It always cracks me up when people literally try to convince me that I want children after I've iterated time and time again that I don't want children. And I will probably never want, not even probably, actually, let me take the probably out. I will never want children. Okay? I am the firstborn daughter of an immigrant family. My parents are from Uganda. The expectation is that I should want kids. I have two younger siblings. I don't ever want children. And I think the reason why is one, they don't fit my lifestyle. So that's one. Two, I feel as though because I was the oldest, raising kids is, is something I'm very familiar with. Um, my parents were pr present parents. Well, my mom was. But for me specifically, there is a level of responsibility that I had at a very young age because I had siblings now. Also, I just feel as though I don't trust the world with children. And I am very, very protective. I'm very, very, very protective of my friends, of people that I love and care about. So if I had kids, it would be like on a thousand. 
So really, I'm trying not to have kids or I'm not going to have kids for the sake of y'all. Okay? <laughs> because one thing about it, if something happened to my kid, I'm ending all of this. All, we, we all finna be done. Ain't There's no coming back from that. So, you know, next time you want to ask me if I want children and I say no, just know it's for your sake too. As much as it is for mine. Thank you. And then finally, this woman jumped in and she's like, mama, just go ahead and get sterilized. So many women I'm seeing across the board taking matters into their own hands. They have no urge, no urge to be mothers. And the phenomenon, or maybe it's just the visibility of what is going on with TikTok and these platforms that are making the child-free movement, the 4B movement, all of these movements so visible. And I'm glad to see Black women able to take control of our bodies, our lives, the things that we want to do, and do what the F we want to do. Now, if that is having kids, cool, have kids. If you want to have kids, make sure you know and understand all that goes into it. If it's not having kids, cool, make that choice. Do what you need to do. Make sure that, you know, you're pouring into your friends, your family, your community, whatever. The, the beautiful thing about living in this day and age is being able to do what you want to do. Make those decisions and live with those decisions. Okay, I have put a lot out there today into the atmosphere. Go ahead. Let me know what you think about all this. And don't forget to like, comment, share. I've iterated time and time again that I don't want children. Get sterilized, mama. I'm telling you, get sterilized. It will help immensely. The conversations, the the snide comments will stop. I got sterilized in my 20s, and I always said I didn't want kids. And people thought I was playing until they saw my picture laid up in the hospital on oxygen, smiling from ear to ear, because I ain't had no babies. I can't have no babies. I remember a guy I dated ended up in the comment section like, oh, you were serious? Yeah, bitch. I was at a family function and an older relative was like, hey, Joe, where your kids at? Like, when you having kids? I didn't even get it out. My brother came from clear across the room going, uh-uh, no, no, she not, she can't have none. She not having no kids. I didn't even have to say anything. Best feeling in the world. Get sterilized.